Howdy folks. So long-time viewers of this channel may recognize this server as uh, Tesla, my primary file server, which is used in production. And uh, it's just a 4U 36-bay Supermicro chassis. Um, however, things are not as they seem. Because this is actually the machine that you remember seeing. Um, this is the machine that used to be Tesla. Um, it's now called Darwin, and it lives in a different room, so I now have two of these things. Um, this is the server that you all remember, it's you know, DDR3, um, all that good stuff. But uh, the other one is a slightly newer generation with newer hardware, better specs. Um, and this all came about uh, when I was upgrading my storage uh, for production, then I needed to upgrade my backup storage. And I ended up with having a lot of problems with my existing backup server. And so it didn't make a lot of sense to buy a new system for my backups. So I bought a new system for production and moved the old production server to backup duty. And so that is, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, I ended up making these servers nice and quiet. Um, obviously the hard drives I can't do anything about, but I made the servers fans quiet. And so I've made a separate video about that and I'll link that in the description. I'm separating that out from this uh, sort of waffly video uh, for people who don't want to have to deal with... Uh, me talking about uh, my personal stuff that uh, they may not have any interest in. So this is the old server. Um, this is, you know, dual Xeon um, uh, six core V2 CPUs. Um, it's got SAS two backplane and um, 48 gigs of DDR3 memory. Um, it's got uh, built in dual gigabit ethernet and, you know, sort of the, the old uh, uh, IPMI uh, BMC uh, software that uses Java. So, um, it doesn't really work in a web browser, but you can use it with the uh, Linux command line Ice-T uh, package. You can, uh, you can still run uh, the IKBM and stuff on these servers. It's just kind of a pain. So the new Tesla system is uh, the same style of chassis. Uh, it's, a, it's an 846, 847 style chassis. It is slightly different. It does have a couple, uh, a couple differences. In fact, this one actually is supposed to have, it has an option for two and a half inch drive bays in the rear, which this one's not fitted with. Um, but you could really, you could swap the internals and it really wouldn't make any difference. The drive slides and everything are all the same. Um, and so this one has uh, the exact same model of CPU. I'll put it in what it exactly is. But it's the V3 version instead of the V2 version. Um, it has 120 gig, 128 gigs of DDR4. Um, it has the newer BMC, um, which has the HTML5 IKVM, so it actually works in a browser. It also has quad 10 gigabit. Nix built in. I don't have any 10 gigabit infrastructure because I use 20 gigabit InfiniBand. Um, so, you know, it, but it, it's something for the future, of course. Um, it has SAS 3 backplanes and a uh, SAS 3008 uh, Broadcom LSI controller. Um, so it's, it's definitely, it's all, you know, it's all, all, uh, all upgraded by at least a generation. Uh, but the nice thing is it's still super micro, still has the exact same power supplies, same, um, you know, same trays, uh, is same form factor, same, all, 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 a lot of stuff is the same or very similar to the point where I can swap parts between the machines, which is really nice. Um, and uh, so I bought this one used on eBay um, and I got it shipped uh, from across country and it did arrive with some shipping damage, unfortunately. Um, they had shipped it with this handle um, in place and this had obviously taken a serious impact on the front and the handle absorbed all the impact. Um, the, the riv nuts that actually screw the handle onto the chassis sheared out of the actual chassis, so there's really no repairing that. And this had all folded, folded over. It's supposed to be this L shape. So I had to put this in a vise. I, I bent it back into a normal shape, and then I hot glued it on here. Um, that's good enough for me, because really these handles are just designed to uh, let you slide it in and out of a rack. And when I do get a rack eventually, um, you know, one handle is sufficient. Um, I'm just glad it wasn't this handle, because this handle, of course, has the electronics with the power button and the LEDs in it. So there's a ribbon cable that runs through this one. And if it had sheared off, then, then we would have had a problem. Um, but uh, I wasn't really going to bother, um, you know, trying to... I, I mean, I'd have to ship this back to California, and that did not make a lot of sense, um, given the amount of damage that I had. So I just kind of repaired it. Everything else was perfectly fine. Um, so no, no issues there. This one also has the same fan uh, modification that I, I outlined in my other video, so you can see what it looks like inside, all that good stuff. Um, this one's actually doing a backup operation, so it's a little louder than it normally is because, of course, the CPUs are loaded and everything. Um, but, yeah, uh, the, the reason why I did this was because uh, I ended up upgrading the storage, so I added, I just didn't add, I replaced 
four, I had four 8 terabyte drives in a RAID Z2, which I replaced with four 14 terabyte drives. Um, so I just did a, you know, a RAID Z expansion. And those, uh, those 14 terabyte disks were really, at least at the time, they were the sweet spot as far as dollars per gigabyte that you, can, you could get in Canada. I know a lot of people, they go to Best Buy and they shuck the WD Easy stores and stuff, but unfortunately, we don't really get that stuff in Canada. So um, the, these drives were really odd because they were from Newegg. Um, they were like shipped from Newegg, sold by Newegg. They weren't third party or anything. And they're the Seagate Exos helium filled enterprise drives. Um, and so, you know, they got a five year warranty. Um, you know, they're rated for, you know, unlimited server, you know, unlimited drives in a chassis, all sorts of great stuff, 24 seven operation. You know, their bit error rate has like an extra zero at the end of it. They're really nicely made drives. Um, and they were several hundred dollars cheaper than the equivalent capacity in the Iron Wolves, which are their home sort of small business NAS drives. So I don't really know what the deal with that was because these things, you know, they beat the pants off the Iron Wolf drives in every specification, um, yet they're way cheaper. So anyway, I don't know. I bought those drives. I know they don't come with data recovery, but I use RAID Z, so I don't care about data recovery. So it has, provides no value to me. So that's what I went with on this machine. And I've been pretty happy with those drives. I was just an in-place upgrade. It was very, very easy. And I took the eight terabyte drives out of this and I put them in the backup server. So the backup server, um, which is actually currently doing a backup right now, it's got the eight four terabyte, you know, ST4000 DM triple zeros. They're still going, they're like seven years old now and they're still doing strong. I haven't lost one yet. Um, I really wish they still made those. Um, but then I put the four eight terabyte drives in here and then I had two spares, two cold spares uh, of the eight terabyte Iron Wolves that I also put in here to increase the capacity um, of the backup server. However, note the backup server was not this chassis at the time. The backup server instead was a desktop chassis. Um, in fact, let me go find it. So this is the old uh, Darwin. This is just a standard uh, Corsair 750D um, case with some consumer hardware in it. Um, and this case was of course never designed to have lots of hard drives in it. Um, so you'll notice how many disk um, sort of bay holders it has in here. Um, and that's because I actually have a second 750D and I removed the, the three and a half inch um, bay um, boxes from it and put it in here. So that gives me a bunch of drive bays more than you normally would have. And then I actually made shelving out of cardboard in the five and a quarter inch bays and, and stuff to try and shove as many drives as possible in here. I maxed out the motherboard SATA controller, then I added um, another HBA and then I maxed out that HBA and then I added another HBA. Um, so this thing was really full. Um, and it, it, this thing at the time was just a Pentium, you know, it's a dual core Pentium uh, with 16 gigs of RAM and nothing really special. And uh, it, it worked fine as a backup server um, until I added the new disks. And when I put those six new disks in it, um, I started to have major problems with the reliability. So the, this thing obviously looks pretty bad as far as wiring goes on the front. Um, the backside is horrendous. It's a complete rat's nest because I have to get power and data independently to every single drive in this machine, which is just awful. Um, you really, really want a backplane when you have this many drives. And it became a problem not only for cable management, but for the reliability of everything. It got to the point where, you know, the system would boot up, a drive would drop out, or it would have some sort of communication error. You'd go, you'd, you know, you, you'd try to diagnose the issue, and you'd fix it, but then another disk would, would have the same problem. Uh, and, you know, it'd be sort of like if you breathed on it wrong, um, you know, there would be some sort of problem with the disks. And some of it, I think, was definitely to do with the the way that the power and everything was routed. Um, there's a lot of SATA power here. And this power supply was never designed with that many SATA power connectors. Now it's modular and I happen to have a lot of Seasonic G series. They're, all, of, all of my ATX power supplies are this. So I have a bunch of extra SATA cables. And so I maxed that out. I did have to use some splitters. You know, there's, there's you know, the safe ones obviously, but there's no, there's no getting around it. And uh, I can't guarantee that at the end of that cable run, the voltage was within spec um, because 
you know, the amount of current going through those wires was, you know, probably reaching the limit um, of what those connectors were rated at. And I believe it's very possible that some of my issues were just due to the drives browning out because, you know, a bunch of the drives would all try to do an operation at the same time because they're in a rate array and they're going to, you know, they pull a big gulp of current, the voltage drops, and then, you know, something browns out and you get, you know, an ICRC error on, on, the, on the ATA bus or something. Um, so it got to the point where it was just too unreliable, even as a backup server, but it was only on for, you know, half an hour a day. It was too unreliable to use. So I had to do something about it. And I looked at just basically getting a, a better chassis. Um, so keeping this hardware the same, just getting a, basically a JBOD, um, a chassis with a backplane that plugs directly into the HBA uh, over like a, you know, a, 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 like a mini SAS connector. Those things were outrageously expensive um, and they just, they, it wasn't worth it. Um, you know, for the price of that, I could spend a little bit more money and just get a full server. And so that's exactly what I did. I went out and I bought a new server um, because, so, so this, was, this was the other funny thing. I could still buy basically this exact same server, the server that I had, DDR3, you know, um, generation uh, Supermicro uh, 846 chassis. But uh, it didn't make a lot of sense um, because for, you know, literally, you know, $100 more or so, I could buy the generation newer, which of course better CPUs, better memory, um, you know, SAS 3, all, all, all newer parts, you know, newer generation um, firmware, and it, everything just made a lot of sense to buy a new one. So I bought a new one and I replaced, um, of course, my production server because that's where I want all the, uh, you know, the, the new stuff to be. And I, once I set this up, um, all of my issues, of course, disappeared. Um, I had no further problems and uh, this has been working perfectly. Um, the only thing that I had to change as far as my sort of workflow was the fact that the, uh, the old server was using wake on LAN uh, to wake the system up, um, you know, so the, 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 the production server would wake on LAN the backup server, uh, it would boot up and then they would do the backup. Now, um, this server, I couldn't find a way to do wake on LAN, but of course, it doesn't need wake on LAN because it has IPMI. So the, the other server actually just uh, talks to the, uh, the board management controller over Ethernet through the management interface, and uh, it just uh, powers the chassis on. Um, so it actually has a little bit, uh, a little bit more functionality now than uh, it did before. So uh, that was the only modification I had to do, and everything else works, works great. Uh, it's actually a little bit faster, um, and that's great. So I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this went. If you want to check out how I uh, changed the fan walls around, made my own, um, you can obviously check that out. But uh, until next time, bye.